I suddenly found myself homeless, okay. almost broke. Uh, sorry, broke, almost homeless. Like it was just terrible. I was going through a really messy divorce and I was literally on the street. I remember walking around with my newborn baby who I could barely take care of because I had an illness. And it just was at the rock bottom of every area in love, spiritually, romantically, emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, in every single way. And when you hit rock bottom on such a low, you say to yourself, like, where, where, what am I doing here? Where, where have I got to go from here? And you realize the only way out of that is up. Born in 92 on the block with the sharks, come from a different cloth, y'all would get ripped apart. You want a diamond, then you gotta get it in the dark. We dropping nuggets like Carmelo with the rock of Paul. Now we eat it from state to state, we scrape the plate. I put my eggs in the basket, took a leap of faith. I took a chance, now we grow and see the impact. Decoding success with special guests, now let's bring that. Natasha, welcome to the show. Excited to have you and to decode your success. Really excited for this. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I love it. Cool. First question for you. This is how we kick off every show. It's a big question, but it's so unique hearing everyone's responses. This is about episode 190 or something like that. So like we're up there already. I'm curious to learn how does Natasha personally define success? Love that question. Success for me is something that you achieve it's not measured by a number money is in fact a byproduct of success mm -hmm. success is who you are what value you offer who you're associated with and where they have seen you mm -hmm. so if you are seen all over the media in great places that's, that's a pretty successful brand or business or you i'd say if you are somebody that is associated with lots of experts alongside you in your field or associated with some big names and celebrities, et cetera, depending on your brand, then I'd say that's the same thing. And then what's the value you're offering? Well, when somebody turns up to your Instagram page or they see the first, they're first brought into your ecosystem and they meet your product or you, what value are you offering to them? Are you bettering their life? Are you helping them better their career? Are you helping them be more like you? Are you helping them make more money? If you are bettering somebody's life, you are offering a lot of value. Mm. And if you don't chase money and you chase success, then you'll get more money. So it's just a byproduct of the success. And success is, it just feels good. And you know you're there when you're ticking all these boxes. Right, I love that. I love that. Now, my question to that is, what transpired in your life, whether it was events or people that have got you to define success in that way? Mm -hmm. So I've been around lots of different people. I mean, look, for me, I didn't come from this. Five years ago, I went through the worst year of my life. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it. What happened? I suddenly found myself homeless, okay. almost broke. Uh, sorry, broke, almost homeless. Like it was just terrible. I was going through a really messy divorce and I was literally on the street. I remember walking around with my newborn baby who I could barely take care of because I had an illness. And it just was at the rock bottom of every area in love, spiritually, romantically, emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, in every single way. And when you hit rock bottom on such a low, you say to yourself, like, where, where, what am I doing here? Where, where have I got to go from here? And you realize the only way out of that is up. Mm -hmm. And so I hit rock bottom. And then from that place, I started to build myself back up from the inside out. So I first of all built my health back and I healed myself using tools and techniques, things like meditation and breathing exercises. And I didn't then actually know that what I was using to heal myself would go on to be my method today, which is the MBS method, which is meditational behavioral synchronicity. So I didn't know that that would be my method to this day. I just thought I'm doing a heap of things and it's gone on to serve a nearly 10 million people community. I always, I'm so excited for the 10 million marks. I'm like, I'm nearly there. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of people we look after and hundreds of thousands of people have been through my programs and we really are changing lives in that way and so when I was going through my growth and going through what I was going through I realized that 
something had to shift. And as I started to shift, I realized that I had something within me that could help others to unlock their full human potential. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my first year after being bed bound, I then built my first million followers on Instagram, made my first million dollars. And as I built that first million dollars, I realized I really have tapped into something here. And I realized we all have an unlimited human potential inside of us. We are limitless. We are able to achieve anything we want. After I came back with this vengeance, I made a deal with the universe and I said, look, if you help me to heal myself, I said, if you help me to, to find this method to get out of this pain, I promise to then share it with the world. Mm. And that was my agreement. That was what I said. I said, you know, if I come back from this, I promise to use my platform for the greater good. It just was no longer about me anymore. And it became about other people. Um, you know, it became about helping others. And so I think that's when it all shifted for me is when I stopped thinking about myself. Before this five years, I had everything absolutely everything success and you know all the houses I wanted and I was in a, a marriage I thought was so great I wasn't what actually happened was I was on a pedestal and I couldn't jump off it safely and so the world hit me to force me to jump off it was like having a rug removed from underneath me and so when that rug is literally removed from underneath you you are forced to change when pain hits you whether it's physical mental emotional spiritual pain it is saying you are going in the wrong direction slow down, change direction, move away, do something different. And I, and I was forced to do that. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because me going through that adversity means that you, whoever's watching, does not have to go through it. Um, and so yeah, that was, my, that was my, my story to success. I love that. I really, really, and I appreciate the vulnerability with that. Uh, so many questions. Firstly, you were just talking about pain. What's your advice to individuals that are tuned into this right now that are experiencing pain and they're suppressing it, right? And it's both men and women that do this. Um, they don't listen to it. They just suppress, 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 whether it's drinking or staying on social media or playing video games or, you know, just ignoring it. And unfortunately, you know, that could really build up and hurt someone. So I'm curious, like, what's your advice to them? When people are suppressing pain, I mean, look, I was, you know, it's an area which I'm really sensitive to because I was there, you know, uh, you don't want to be focusing externally on everyone else when you're going through something in terms of comparison. Mm -hmm. What you do want to do is look at others around you and see how you can help. As soon as you turn the problem away from yourself and you look outwards and you say, what can I do for other people? What kind gesture can I do today to serve somebody? your entire day and problem changes because you're no longer focused on the outcome, on the problem. You're focused on the outcome. You're focused on something greater than you. And it takes a really strong person to be able to do that, but it's such a powerful thing to do. You really don't want to focus on the comparison, looking on social media and thinking how perfect somebody else's life is because it's never real. You know, I put up a picture on my anniversary and the day after I broke up with the guy. You oh. would never know what somebody is really going through. And so you can never believe it. And authenticity is key. There's a whole chapter about this in my best-selling book, the, the Action Plan. You want to be the best at yourself, not be second place to somebody else. You see? You always want to win at yourself and be amazing in your own power. Be incredible in your own power and not be... Some, trying to be somebody else because you're never going to be like them. Mm. You've got to work out what your values are because if you're focusing on what their values are, you're just putting yourself down and you feel terrible. I'm not like him. I'm not like her. But what you can do, this is really interesting. This is my fourth pillar of manifesting. I have five pillars of manifesting, right? My fourth pillar is expansion and visualization and using people to expand your vision. So the only benefit in what you're talking about of social media and things like that is you can choose people that you do or don't know to expand your vision. So if you want to fall in love, you want to be choosing five couples around you who can expand that vision for you. It could be people you know and you hang out with, but they have to be in a loving relationship like you want or one step above already. They have to be already in that place. And your brain needs to be able to say, I want to be like that. And if she can do it, I can do it because I love her. I love what they're about. You surrender to it with compassion and love. And you realize she came from this. I came from this. She got there. I can get there. So your brain says it's familiar. And my method, the MBS method, has got neuroscience involved in it heavily. So this is an area I love. 
So going deeper and looking at people as expanders is why my fourth pillar is so powerful. So I often use social media, you know, when I wanted to manifest my uh, to be husband. Now I wrote down my vision of what I wanted. And within three weeks, I manifested him. And I had, you know, all my different techniques going at the same time. But what I did was I chose people who were going to expand my vision. A couple of them I'm friends with, you know, I hang out with them anyway. And then I just kind of put together my five, my five power couples and surrounded myself with them either in person or, I mean, I tend to know like m most of my expanders, um, but you know, I just make sure I was hanging out with them enough and, and spending time and that you learn, you kind of just surround yourself and immerse yourself with the feeling of already being there because when you act as if you have something, in fact, it comes to fruition quicker. So did you actually write a list? Because this is what I do. I'm curious. Did you write a list of like all the characteristics and like who you want your ideal partner to be? Was that what I heard you say? Yeah. So I wrote a list of a hundred people that I wanted to be like, um, in, I wanted my partner to be like, or that I sort of wanted to see in him. And it would be everything from loving, abundant, healthy, wealthy, all these things. And every detail in between. So I was like, you know, I want him to have this and this and blue eyes and all these, all these things, right? You can be as detailed as you want. The reason I say that is because any detail that you miss out, the universe will fill in for you. And you don't want to be missing out details. You want to fill in everything. And so I filled in every detail. And then instead of just seeing this list and waiting for it to happen, I took action on it. I opened my eyes to new opportunities. I started manifesting it. These are other techniques to talk about. And that actually I did probably the main thing. I stepped into my own queen energy and I said, am I her? Am I already acting like this person that I want to see on this paper? Because if you cannot mark yourself five out of five on almost all of these attributes, which you've put down for your partner, then you are just not in your, your right energy and you are not actually the same frequency as the person that you want to manifest. So I said, am I five out of five for all these things? And if I said, yes, I am, or I'm working towards it massively and I believe it, then yes, that counts as, as a four or five. But if you have one, twos or threes on your paper, you have to work on those areas. And only when you've conquered those areas, you are feeling at your full energy. Are you then able to attract that person into your life? You're so right. I love that. Now, you mentioned you had five pillars. You told us about one, the expansion. What are the other four? Okay, so pillar number one is get clarity of your vision. So Napoleon Hill said, when you want something, you want to write your statement down. You want to write it down so it's so clear. You know exactly what it is you want. And you want to write that goal down and set it in time and space. So you know when you want it by. And you write it down and then you put it on paper and you read it aloud and you write it down or read it aloud twice a day. So my first pillar is based around Napoleon's Hill teaching from Think and Grow Rich, the 1937 book. And that's cl get clarity of your vision. But getting clarity of your vision, it sounds so simple. Most people do not know what they want to achieve. Most people have no idea what it is they want in their life. They'll say, I want this or I want this. They actually don't have any idea on what it is that they want. So they'll say they're kind of all over the shop and that does not help. The universe wants to feel your energy of what you want so profoundly in order to reflect it back to you. We're like a radio station, right? Whatever frequency we give out, the universe gives back to us. It just reflects it directly. The one of the key laws in the law of attraction, like attracts like. And so what your thoughts are doing and your feelings are doing, you're going to see back in your life. Your outer reality is a direct reflection of your inner self-beliefs. Mm -hmm. So what do you believe about yourself? So pillar one is get clarity of your vision, know exactly what you want. Pillar two is remove the blockages, remove the self-limiting beliefs that are stopping you from achieving what you want into your life. And if you can remove those, you can do that through all kinds of different things. There's many different methods. My MBS method is one of the biggest things that we're finding is helping the fastest with removing those blockages because it brings together time-tested meditation, integrated breathing exercises, anchoring, neuroscience, all in altered states of awareness. It's so cool, right, Matt? You basically start here where we're in beta, but then you go deeper into alpha and into theta. And when you're in these altered states of awareness, you are able to go into the subconscious mind and reprogram it. So the way you've been thinking, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, you can remove that thought and replace it. And that's what pillar three is, replacing the old negative self-belief with a new self-belief, with a new belief 
process. And when you replace the old one, again, you can do this in my altered state of awareness at the, in, with my MBS method. You definitely want to be in an altered state of awareness to do it. You really want to be deeper. You can do it with meditation as well. That's good. But a lot of people don't know what to look for when they're like, you know, how do I do it? So that's why my MBS method just does it all for you because it's guided. It's really powerful. Now, when you replace it, you keep that there strongly. And now you have a new belief about yourself. And when you have a new belief about yourself, you're able to think differently and then you'll see a different reality. Let me give you just a, a quick bit of science behind it. In, our, in the lower part of our brain, we have a, a place called the reticular activating system. I talk about the RAS all the time. And what it does is it filters 2 million bits of data every second, like colors and sounds and all kinds of things all the time. So just imagine it's constant data. What it does for you is it shows you anything around you that you deem as important. So what do you deem as important? anything you focus your mind on. So if you're focusing your mind on, oh, I'm so unworthy of, of this, of love, of this, of that, then you're ultimately gonna only see around you opportunities, events, and places, and people that will prove your belief system of feeling unworthy of love, for example. Mm -hmm. And so you just see crap relationship after crap relationship after this, after this, after bad person, because you don't believe you're worthy. And so your RAS is showing you evidence to prove your belief system is real. Therefore, if you change your belief system and you change it to, I am worthy of love, I am worthy of abundance, whatever it might be that you didn't believe before, and you change it and you believe it wholeheartedly and you really step into that power, your reticular activating system will now show you evidence around you to prove your new belief system is real. And when it shows you your new belief system is real, all of a sudden you're seeing different events, opportunities and places that are completely unique. Actually, they were always there, but you didn't see them. Right. And now you're seeing them all around you and everything just starts to be real. And it's evidence proving this belief system. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I'm a student okay. right now. I love this. Love it. Amazing. So then we go to pillar four, which is expansion, visualization. So using any tools like visualization and affirmations and positive thinking, that's like a small part of it. The rest of it is really using people as expanders to grow your vision. So you want to expand this vision through people who are like-minded, one step above. You are ultimately who you hang out with. So if you are surrounded by happiness and abundance and brilliant things, you will see around you and people who are in these kind of relationships of happiness and abundance in any area, you will see those sorts of results in your life. If you surround yourself with negative energies and people who are not serving you in any way and they're just pulling you down, they're toxic, that's what you'll see in your life. So you need to expand your vision by constantly focusing on other people who are already living the life you want to. Mm -hmm. your brain remembers it's familiar and says oh i like that I, if they can do it i can do it too and then the fifth pillar is take action so pillar five is take action and that means that my, my book's called the action plan it's literally it's it's this whole thing take action inspired action upon your dream upon anything that you want to attract into your life so if you want to attract into your life uh, a financial breakthrough you want to attract something into your life you can't just sit and wait for it to come you've got to put all the pillars into action and then finally get off your ass and go and take steps towards your goal and in my programs they go into detail on how to do this one um you know so it's fantastic it's it's just it's a brilliant bulletproof method on how to get what you want in life that's incredible. So I'm going to make sure we actually have the link to the book in the show notes of this episode. But what I want to ask now is if someone's reading the book, what do you want one thing? If they could only take one thing away from the book, what do you want that one thing to be? If you could only take one thing away from the book and then I'll tell you about my programs. I think that's even like cool if it's interactive. Um, if you could only take one thing away from the book, it would be to apply all the areas of the book of every chapter into your life and realize it's not just one thing that is going to attract what you want to you it is about aligning them putting them all together and believing wholeheartedly that you are worthy of what you want and not just that you're worthy of it that you believe it is already yours as if it is already yours because then simultaneously you are believing it you are taking action on it and it comes to volition I love that. I know you do these often. You have students, et cetera. You're on Clubhouse. You're everywhere. What is a question you wish more people would ask you and how would you answer it? Um, I wish more people would ask me 
what the initial breakthrough was for me on when and what I did when I was coming out of my pain. Mm. Because when you're depressed, you don't see any other way. So I wish more people would actually go to sort of that. And I do get asked uh, probably a lot, but that more, if that was a question I'd love to focus on. And I would answer it with, well, I, I, this is really actually such a mad exercise I did. I went to a mirror, I walked up to a mirror and I was feeling so low and depressed. And I walked up to this mirror and I just said, like, who, who are you? I started talking to myself and I was started crying actually. I was really emotional. And I was, I was standing, I was in Cape Town at the, at the time. I'd flown to my parents' wedding. I was unwell and I had to see a doctor when I got there. I was, you know, really in a bad way. And, um, and I remember standing there thinking like, how am I going to go down the aisle with my mom tomorrow? I'm just not. And I just thought there's, there's no way I'm going to make it down that aisle. But like, I was saying to myself, you're going to do this. So I thought, let me get myself psyched up. And what ended up happening was I played a motivational video. And when I played a motivational video by Denzel Washington, I remember it was beautiful and I put it on and I started like listening and then I turned it up and I bled it out, the speakers in the room. And I remember just staring in that mirror and it was getting louder and louder and louder. And I started just, I was just listening and almost like allowing myself to be brainwashed with this incredible vibe of positive motivation and energy. And I just started to let go of the resistance inside of me. And I was like, oh my God, this is only temporary. And so I was saying to myself, you do not need this. Whatever you're going through right now is only temporary. This is not you. And I, I could see like my shell as my body and inside of me as my soul. And I knew that I was looking into my eyes. And if you, if you know, anyone who looks at a mirror for long enough in your own eyes, you start to have an experience which feels out of body because you are realizing what is this? This is mine. So who is the person inside saying mine to the body? Do you get it? So if I say to you, whose body is that, Matt? You're going to say mine more than like 99% of people do. Because that means there is a soul inside of you who this body belongs to. This body is carrying the soul. And so I looked at her and I knew that. And I worked that out. And I was like, this is not permanent. This is not what I'm going through. I can change this. The same way I can shift my emotion. I can shift the pain I'm going through. And now I'm going to change it. And now I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to declare it over myself. And I was crying and crying and letting it out. And I was literally preaching over myself. You are not this. You are amazing. You are worthy. This is only temporary. And I just, it was just the most empowering moment. And then that was the first breakthrough. That was the first part of my breakthrough. And then I started doing my MBS method, which again, as I told you, I didn't know it was that then. And I was doing it every day with the breathing exercise and the meditation and everything started to shift. Do you feel like you had to hit rock bottom? I'm just curious because I actually have this conversation rather often, right? It's like people get close to rock bottom, they hit rock bottom and then they bounce back up. But like, what can we do to maybe help someone that's listening to this avoid getting that low? Right. And it even goes back to what I asked earlier when it comes to like identifying that you have pain and working on it before like it explodes in front of your face. So I'm curious, like, did you feel like you had to hit rock bottom or was it obviously, you know, listen, it happened. So it was meant to happen. We can, you know, agree upon that. But um, I'm just curious, like, what's your thoughts on that? I believe I had to hit rock bottom in order to be where I am now. I believe that if I hadn't, sorry, if I hadn't have been through what I have now, I would not be the person I am today. I don't, I would definitely not have the tools to be able to serve anyone else because I, people like me, I really believe are, gi are given a platform and we're given it for a reason. But why do you think that pain happens to people like me, people who have got these massive platforms? Look at the adversity that some of the like leading thought leaders in the world have been through. A lot of them are my buddies and we talk about this all the time. We've been through adversity on such a high level, a lot of us, and we've been through some kind of major challenge in our life, whether it's addiction or being homeless and you know broke and all kinds of different things. The reason we've been through a lot of it is because we have a voice and we are able to go out there and give other people a voice to be heard and loved and valued and supported. And so if I'm able to have a platform like that, I, my mission could go so much further. And so it already is like this, but if I didn't go through that adversity, I wouldn't have something to teach somebody in the same way that I do the profound way. Mm -hmm. I would only be able to teach them surface level and you know, this, this will probably really help you. The way I've been through that pain, I'm speaking from experience, I've been through the hell so that you don't have to go through it. Mm -hmm. I've been through adversity so you don't have to. So you can prevent yourself from going through it. Or how about this? You don't have to struggle to get what you want. 
you can just know the bulletproof method on how to get what you want. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I, I definitely resonate with that as well. Now, clearly, you know, you, you just mentioned you align with some really amazing individuals. You interview some amazing individuals as well. The demons of the world, Jesse Itzler, et cetera, et cetera. So like, what do you feel like has been your biggest takeaway or like your, your biggest learning from those interviews? Well, I think for me, it's really realizing my own power. And I've learned that every single person is just wonderful and has something different to teach. And together, if we all support each other's missions, we're able to go so much further. That's why we work together. We cross-pollinate, you know, and we end up then doing masterminds together and and working together on things. And it's fantastic because my method helps their audience then and their teachings and books and methods help my audience. And we all swap, which is beautiful. And together we rise. And, uh, you know, when people stand together with, with the same mission of helping people, it's beautiful because I can't light the whole world up on my own. You know, and we all want to light a candle and continue lighting a candle and lighting a candle. And then we'll all have a profound change in the world. The world will be kinder. There'll be less problems. The health will increase for everybody. The humanity will, will rise and be more conscious and able to achieve more of what they want. And so it's very important for me to to see that. And I learned that from doing all of this work and having people on my platform like this, it enabled me to grow faster, you know, but I had to manifest that, but I'm a, I'm a living proof of it. Of I, you know, I self prophesize over myself. I have a quote in my book and it says, be it until you become it. Mm. And so if you be it until you become it, you effectively are faking it till you make it. And so you don't, you just kind of like, you have to pretend in some way who you are before you get there. If you pretend right. who you are before you get there, then by the time you get there, you, you're already there because people are already treating you like you're already there. But you have to step into that power and, and start to become the person that you want to be. And then you start working one by one with, with people who are, like I said, you know, on your, on your wavelength or one step above and, or five steps above, you know, some cases, and you just go from there and it expands. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. Now, I know I need to get you out of here in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to ask you two more questions. We always ask these questions on the way out of these interviews. The first one being, what is a piece of advice that Natasha heard that she didn't want to hear at the time it was given to her, but proved to be true? Oh, wow. Um, um, (laughs) Save your money. I think I was always told that many years ago before everything hit me. And um, you know, I would spend as fast as I earned and I had this great career. And I, you know, I, I'd made millions before I was 26. You know, I was really in a great place. However, I didn't save in the right way because by this point I'd already spent it and I lost all my money and then lost all my money again. And it was like, I went from abundant to, to broke. And then I came back again um, you know, in that first year back. And if I'd had savings, I never would have had that rainy day. So at least one area wouldn't have been bad. It would have been going through a divorce, but I wouldn't have been broke, mm-hmm. you know, I, or maybe I lost a lot in, in that case, but I would have been in a different place, but I wasn't. So save, that was definitely something um, that I wish I'd listened to at the time. And, you know, it's, I, you know, I understood that afterwards. So that was definitely something I wish I'd done earlier. Um, and then, another piece of advice I wish I'd taken would have been to have started just got on and started at the time when people like just go for it and you're like no you know I'm just gonna wait until I've got the whole of the ecosystem built out I'm gonna wait until I've got the whole of this thing built out no forget it you go out there and you say to the people hey guys if I make a resource on how to get famous in five minutes, would you buy it? And then they'll say, yeah. And you do a poll on your Instagram story. And if people are saying, yeah, brilliant, there's your new audience to sell to, then go make the course. I was trying to build and build and build and build in different ways. And I suddenly went, forget this. I've got an audience on Instagram. I've got a million people. And that's when I made my first million dollars. I just sold, you know, you sell 10,000 units, $100, you're there. You know what I mean? So it's, it's actually quite easy once you know how. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Now, last question for you, Natasha. If you could only give one piece of advice the rest of your life, meaning if you're hopping on more podcasts, writing books, hopping on stages, on Clubhouse, wherever, if you could only give one piece of advice the rest of your life, what would it be? Believe in yourself and your dreams will come true. Okay. Why do you say that? Because belief is everything. 
what you see around you, as I said before, is a direct reflection of your inner self-beliefs. If you don't see abundance in every area of your life, if you don't see a healthy and happy, harmonious relationship around you, if you don't see financial freedom, financial creativity in any way, if you don't see high levels of every arena in your life, there is a limiting belief inside of you that you do not believe you are worthy of that thing. And so for me, when I learn, it's all about self-belief. And if you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter if other people do or don't. You ride through that. You ride that wave and say, I don't care if you believe me or not. I believe in myself and I believe I know where I'm going. Mm. And you will. So believe in yourself wholeheartedly that you can have, be, and do anything you want. And it's yours. That's amazing. Now, do you have anything that we didn't talk about that you want to talk about? I know you talked about the MBS system, your program, your, your book, et cetera. I'll have all of that good stuff in the show notes, but is there anything else that we need to make people aware of that we could throw in there as well? Well, I think what we could add in is um, around my mindset elevation. So every Saturday I host this incredible class and it's my mindset elevation membership program. We sit all together. It's so nice. And it's live online and we meditate. We do my live meditational behavioral synchronicity method, which is the MBS method. And we sit and we go deeper for one hour and you learn to erase your self-limiting beliefs and attract what you want into your life. And it's such a powerful place to start. You know, it's like going to the gym, but going to the gym for your mind and your soul. Right. Cool. Yeah, so that's uh, that's really nice. So if people want to understand a little bit more about the MBS method, I've got my free program, which is called Manifest Your Desires. And they can get a hold of that in my bio or my Instagram and right here, you guys can, can take that free gift and take that away today and just understand what this is about. And then if you're up for it, once you understand it, then you can go deeper and join us every Saturday. Okay, awesome. I'm going to make sure that I have all the socials, websites, programs, books, etc. in the show notes of this episode. But Natasha, I want to say thank you again. I know you got to run. I want to make sure I'm getting you out of here on time. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, Absolutely God. love it. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> You're a beautiful soul, and I really look forward to connecting with you. Thank you. Born in '92, on the block with the sharks. Come from a different cloth. Y'all would get ripped apart. You want a diamond, then you gotta get it in the dark. We dropping nuggets like Carmelo went the.